Welcome to webinar in, on implementing Industry 4.0 and beyond. Thank you for joining us. For your information, today's webinar is conducted by a Microsoft Teams. You can also view us through YouTube and Facebook Live at the RB Highcom University. Please do not forget to register by using the link provided. For better audio, you might want to put on your earphone or headphone. Our mode of interaction will be through the chat room. So do leave your comments and questions there. The Q&A session will be around 30 minutes before our program ends. There will be a photo session at the end of the program, so you can turn on your camera for the session. Do visit our IG and FB at the RB Highcom University for more updates and photos. The webinar is going to begin at 10 a.m. Meanwhile, let's view a montage by the RB Highcom University.
Yang berbahagia, Profesor Datuk Surveyor Dr. Omar Osman, the Vice Chancellor DRB High Com University of Automotive Malaysia. Yang berbahagia, Professor I Associate Professor IR Haji Shamil Abu Hassan, Deputy Vice Chancellor DRB High Com University of Automotive Malaysia. Yang berbahagia, Associate Professor TS Safiza Simon, Registrar DRB High Com University of Automotive Malaysia. Dr. Muhammad Imran Sawar, Vice President Sky Mine CNS. Dr. Ahmad Rasmi Al-Batad as our moderator for today. Our speakers, T.S. Samsul Anwar Abdul Wahid, Director, Corporate Technology, Mimos Berhad, T.S. Norayu Abdul Talib, Managing Director, Dalatika Sendian Berhad, Mr. Ricky Siu Kisan, Industrial Consultant, Dal Datalitika Sendian Berhad, Mr. Edward Christian, Datalit PT Zebra Cross Technology, Mr. Pradita Herdiansha, Head of Business, PT Zebra Cross Technology. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good morning and welcome everyone to webinar on implementing Industry 4.0 and beyond, organized by School of Leadership, the RBI Com University of Automotive Malaysia, in collaboration with Datalytics Senior Murhat and Malaysia Fourth Industrial Revolution Consortium. Ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed with our main agenda, let's pray to the Almighty for his guidance and mercy. Allow me to invite Al-Fadil Ustaz Muhammad Royan Muhammad Shaikuddin to lead the Dua Recital. Al-Fadil Ustaz. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen. Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. اللهم إنا نسألك سلامة في الدين وعافية في الجسد وزيادة في العلم وبركة في الرزق وتوبة قبل الموت ورحمة عند الموت ومغفرة بعد الموت اللهم هون علينا في سفرات الموت والنجاة من النار والعفو عند الحساب اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم إنا نسألك رزقا حلالا طيبا اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك واغننا بفضلك عمن سواك ربنا لا تذر قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين Thank you very much, Afadi Lustats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Yang Berbahagia Professor Datuk Surveyor Dr. Omar Osman, Vice Chancellor of the RB High Com University and Chairman of Malaysia 4 IRC for his opening speech. Yang Berbahagia Datuk. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. Very good morning to everyone here. Uh, let me first and foremost uh, ucapkan uh, kesyukuran kepada Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala kerana dengan izin dan limpah kurnianya pada pagi ini kita dapat bersama-sama. Uh, selamat dan salam kepada junjungan kita Nabi Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, keluarga Baginda dan sahabat-sahabat Baginda. Uh, we also pray uh, that today we will be able insyaAllah to do the uh, webinar on implementing industry 4.0 and beyond uh, which is co-hosted both by DLB Highcom University and the Malaysia IR 4.0 Consortium. Uh, for today, uh, first and foremost, let me welcome everyone here, uh, our participants on multi-channel uh, 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 webinar uh, by Teams and also Facebook Live. And uh, let me first and foremost uh, say thank you to uh, Dr. Imran uh, for uh, coordinating this together with our team uh, in the RBI Com University. And secondly, uh, I welcome uh, our moderator, Dr. Ahmad, 
from MSU. Uh, how are you? I hope you are uh, doing well. And also the panelists today, uh, T.S. Samshul uh, from Mimos, uh, T.S. Norayu from Dalatika, Riki Sio Kisan from Dalatika, uh, Mr. Edward Christian, and also uh, Pradita Hadian Shah uh, from PT Zubra Cross Technology. Uh, I'm sure today will be a uh, very interesting uh, uh, program that uh, we uh, uh, we will be uh, doing, uh, and I'm sure uh, this is uh, the beginning of uh, the things that we are going to do uh, today. Uh, so what we hope that uh, we will do, uh, I will do a presentation on uh, the uh, my speech uh, so that all of you can also have uh, 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 these uh, uh, slides for you to refer to. Next. Okay. Uh, I think I, I need the secretary to uh, do the control. Uh, can you control the slides? Thank you. Okay, uh, so uh, what we're going to do uh, today is to look at uh, how uh, IR4 or 4IR uh, can uh, be implemented across all sectors of the economy. And uh, two of the important uh, aspects of the uh, 4IR, at the core of it is data and also artificial intelligence. Uh, the industrial uh, and other sectors need to assess their readiness and benchmark themselves with uh, many other countries, uh, as stated here, maybe China and Germany, uh, for uh, their readiness uh, to go uh, into IR 4.0. The readiness assessment is available by many uh, 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 organizations in Malaysia, and uh, this will help uh, companies to draft strategy for the implementation of the IR 4.0 uh, to be AI enabled, to be uh, autonomous uh, in the landscape of 4IR. Uh, also very important is that companies should look at how uh, it can upskill and reskill uh, their uh, human resource uh, to create or to get uh, IO2 engineer, uh, data scientists, uh, other engineers uh, that can uh, be useful, especially the software engineer. Uh, I call upon uh, all uh, the SMEs uh, who probably is here today uh, to actually think big, uh, but start small uh, with uh, something that you can afford, uh, such uh, as uh, what we call the uh, MVP or minimum viable product, uh, by doing prototyping, uh, POC, and address uh, some of those that can help you to move forward and increase your productivity. Next. Uh, we, uh, therefore, uh, on our side, our Malaysia 4IR uh, consortium consists of uh, about nine organizations uh, in Malaysia that we want to work through to support uh, the transition uh, post-COVID to enable AI enable uh, IR for 4IR uh, to capture the benefits of innovation. Uh, we also want to uh, uh, try to see uh, how uh, in the long term, you can invest and plan uh, the long term needs of AI. Uh, also ensure that Malaysia will get uh, the national and regional uh, technologies into uh, the country by innovation and uh, 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 proper investment. Uh, though therefore, our Malaysia Fourth IR uh, Consortium, uh, or we call it 4IRC, uh, will try to act to support to be one of the player to support to achieve uh, this uh, through uh, a seminar or webinar as this uh, to support what the government is doing to work uh, in collaboration with various academia uh, to look also uh, on PPP private pri private partnership and involvement of others. Uh, I can inform you there are a few uh, organization that is with us. Uh, among them is uh, Kismac uh, from Kedah, uh, U Science Holding uh, from uh, USM, Penang, uh, Talent Corp, uh, Mimos, TM, uh, organization especially in the northern region, T 
Itramas uh, from uh, Malacca, uh, who's operating the solar PV, uh, the Quest University in Ipoh, the RB Highcom University, uh, and uh, also uh, Dalatika. Uh, we will be uh, opening up this uh, membership after we have uh, uh, launched our four uh, Malaysia for IRC in December. Uh, these uh, companies or organization that is with us now is the founding uh, member. Uh, we hope that uh, we can uh, assist and be part of the uh, 4IR uh, transformation of Malaysia uh, and uh, bring along uh, together the expertise with some programs that we plan. Next. Uh, so to do uh, this, uh, we believe that we actually should uh, look at a few uh, uh, activities uh, that is attracting benefits of AI enabled for IR uh, adoption across as many sectors that we can go uh, to emerge and assist Malaysia so that it can emerge as a regional player in the, the various aspect of research and development uh, to also look at how we can assist in the growth of for IR uh, sectors contributing to uh, the growth in the, uh, GDP beyond uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic and uh, look at uh, how to get address uh, issues regarding uh, the uh, security uh, that uh, can be a very important part of uh, strong national 4IR capabilities. Uh, and uh, this we will push through uh, through various collaboration that we want to work on uh, and uh, we believe that we can actually uh, be part of a uh, semi-public-private uh, uh, organization uh, that is uh, working together for, for the benefit of the nation. Next. So today, uh, uh, we hope that uh, the seminar will actually assist in uh, the focus of investment in AI enable uh, for IR ecosystem, uh, looking at the benefits of uh, for IR uh, 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 activities and looking at how to apply data in AI and also cybersecurity uh, and also blockchain governance effectively. So I'm sure the uh, experts today uh, can also look at uh, some of these uh, dimensions uh, and uh, to move forward uh, in uh, building capacity uh, for uh, the uh, for IR sectors. Next. So in conclusion, uh, my short uh, welcoming speech here, I do hope all of you stay uh, together uh, until the end, uh, give in some questions and feedback. It will be very useful for the RB Highcom University and also the members of Malaysia for uh, IR uh, Consortium to look at the aspects of artificial intelligence and beyond, uh, and bearing in mind that the pandemic and uh, coming to an endemic stage uh, will be a wake up call for everybody to work together to create a smart uh, economy across all the four sectors. Uh, I call upon everyone to work together uh, to uh, join forces uh, uh, to assist our industry, especially uh, the SMEs and also uh, the various uh, educational institutions. Uh, I'm sure there are main, uh, many experts around that we can harness uh, the potential of uh, the, uh, uh, the IR 4.0 uh, aspects uh, to be applied across uh, as many sectors as possible. So again, uh, do uh, join us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being part of the uh, Malaysia for uh, IR Consortium. Uh, thank you for uh, coming uh, to our university also virtually. Uh, do be part of uh, an exciting journey uh, for Malaysia, especially in the uh, Triumph Malaysia plan that is that was launched a few days ago. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh, and uh, do uh, stay tuned and uh, enjoy the knowledge sharing session. So, sekian terima kasih. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yang Berbahagia Dato. Ladies and gentlemen, this webinar is organized by the School of Leadership, Corporate Training Institute, the RB Highcom University of Automotive Malaysia as part of its Leadership Talk Series. The objective is to give in-depth 
Industry 4.0 Implementation to Entrepreneurs, Practitioners, Graduates, Students, Academics, Corporate and Industry on the Assessment, Roadmap, Advanced Skills and Solution. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce our moderator for today. Dr. Ahmad Rasmi Albata is a Senior Lecturer in Postgraduate Centre, Management and Science University. He holds a doctoral degree in Hospitality Management from University of Science Malaysia. His impressive, impressive credentials include being a visiting professor and external examiner in Medan Academy of Tourism, an assistant professor at Aman Applied University College, Aman Jordan, and a researcher at Sustainable Tourism Research Cluster, Penang. He had 17 years of experience working for the Jordanian hospitality industry, an active member of scientific and ed editorial review board for various corpus journal who has participated and presented research papers in several international academic conferences. Without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Ahmad Rasmi Albata to lead the forum. The floor is all yours, Doctor. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Puan Laili, for the uh, great introduction and the great uh, um, um, uh, webinar for today. Thank you for inviting me. And um, um, we are very much inspired by the opening speech by uh, Professor Dato uh, SR, Dr. Omar Osman, uh, the Vice Chancellor of the RB High uh, University and also the Chairman for the Malaysian for IRC. Uh, thank you so much for um, uh, being with us also to our audience. And uh, um, we have today, uh, to brief you, we have today, uh, as Ms. Puanlaili mentioned in the morning, so uh, we have five speakers. Uh, for, uh, they will be sharing with us their uh, great knowledge uh, regarding the topic of uh, for IR and uh, how we are working on implementing the industrial IR 4.0 and uh, beyond. Uh, uh, please allow me to introduce our first speaker, T.S. Shamsul Anwar Abdul Wahid. Uh, he is the Director of Corporate uh, Technology, Mimos Perhad, uh, Malaysia. Uh, T.S. Shamsul started his career in manufacturing sector after six years with several U.S. MNCs in the area of process, uh, product, and MPI. He switched direction to uh, software development. Uh, prior to Mimos, his software development experience are in the area of telecommunication, ATE, EDA, and several MNCs and local RD companies. So uh, with this, I want to pass the mic to uh, T.S. Shamsul Anwar for his inspiring speech. Uh, T.S. Shamsul Anwar, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, moderator Dr. Ahmad. Assalamualaikum and good morning to uh, Professor Datuk Suraya. Omar Osman, uh, VC of uh, the RB High Community and also Chairman of the Malaysia for IR Consortium. The organizer, uh, other uh, fellow panelists and speaker, and also all the participants today. Um, uh, as the first speaker, I have been assigned to talk a little bit on the industry forward uh, readiness assessment, or we call it SRA. So let me start with the question by Simon Sinek of why. why. Why the industry should go for the assessment? This is assessment that is uh, conducted through METI and is uh, sponsored by METI. For the industry, they don't have to pay anything. Uh, first of all, in terms of funding, for those companies that uh, already go through the assessment, they have the access to uh, some specialized fundings by the government. Uh, Two of them are the uh, intervention funding and also the DISF funding that is specialized for those companies that already went through the RA. And MIDA always uh, has always been working together with uh, other financial institutions to make the RA report as part of supporting document for any uh, application for funds and loans uh, in the area of uh, industrial uh, for IR, basically. On top of the funding, the assessors that uh, going to do the assessment are selected uh, based on their experience in manufacturing and uh, technology. Uh, so the SME will have the opportunity actually to get a free consultation in terms of for IR 
So if they can ask the assessor any question that they have regarding the 4IRR can be a high level question, can be a very specific question on certain certain technology that they are thinking to implement. The assessment itself uh, will go through the business, the operation, uh, production and everything basically with the ideas that to try to figure out what are the problems uh, to pinpoint uh, uh, the pinpoints of the company specific to the company. So at the end of the RA, the company, uh, even if they don't go for the funding or they didn't go for anything else, they will get the report that will highlight the areas of improvement and some recommendation that they can do actually on their own. And uh, last but not least, uh, as uh, mentioned by our VC, the, the RA will provide not only the snapshot of the current situation of the company, you also provide the future roadmap. So after the RA, uh, the company should have some idea how they can move forward in their I4.0 journey. And uh, one of the tools that is provided also is the, the self-assessment tools that they can use basically to track their future roadmap, roadmap basically. Uh, it's a measurable uh, uh, way how they can measure their I4.0 implementation. So once you know what is the why, uh, I will just go through what, what is the RA itself. Uh, as the name it is, it's a, an assessment, so it's not an audit. It means that there's no right and wrong, there's no pass or fail. It's just a snapshot of where the company is in terms of their readiness to embark to the industry 4.0 journey. Why this is important, this is a to benchmark or to baseline the company so that whatever the proposed intervention, the proposed direction will fit the level for each of the different companies. Uh, so it means that if you already advanced, then you're talking about advanced technology as the moving forward, for example, AI or big data, but you don't have any data collection, uh, and then uh, you'll be talking about how to collect the data. So this is a, only an assessment the much, much more information that is shared with the assessor uh, will be better outcome in terms of the proposal and also the findings. Historically, the industry forward RA uh, created one year after the launch of the industry forward uh, uh, by METI. The industry forward initiatives uh, launched in 2018 and the RA itself under METI started in 2019. And the framework for the uh, assessment itself is uh, based on the chief factors that is uh, stated in the, uh, in the industry forward uh, RA uh, vision and mission statement. Uh, when we look at the shift factors, it's talking about uh, people, process, and technology, and the shift factors are supported through eight trust, and the trust are um, break down into 21 dimensions. So during the assessment, the assessor will go through the 21 dimension together with the company. Uh, if you put it into a single uh, single diagram, it look like this, it means at the center you have the three shift factors, the people, process and technology. For example, you take the people as one of the shift factor, uh, then it has two uh, supporting trust, human capital development and a transformation initiative. Then under the human capital development, we have the two dimension of personal industry competency and top management technology savings and under the transformation initiative, you have leadership, collaboration structure and governance that industry for strategy. When we go to the shift factor, uh, the first shift factor, I think the most important shift factor that we find out so far is the uh, people part. So when we talk about people, we're talking about the organization. Uh, when the assessor go to the organization, we are asking the question what, uh, why and how in terms of the organization. It means that what are the things that the company are doing, uh, why they are doing it, and how they are 
planning to do it and how they are doing it now. Uh, because of this, normally during the assessment, we will go through the company vision, missions, uh, mission statement, their strategy. Uh, we also try to figure out if they have anything that related to Industry 4.0 inside their vision on or their mission. And if they have, if you don't have, then we work it out with them. If if they already have, then we go through what is their I4.0 roadmap. Then we try to see how does this uh, roadmap align to their vision and also align to the current situation that they have. Uh, we also look at uh, things like as the organization charts, the current charts and future charts and also their training plan so that uh, uh, it support the roadmap. So we the hope is that uh, they will have a successful I4.0 implementation that are uh, sustainable in the future and it can help them to grow and is addressing the right uh, problematics area or pain points. Second shift factor, the process. Uh, we are looking at process monitoring and process control. This is done through the site visit. So we will visit the enterprise operation, the facility, the shop floor. If the company have multiple location sites, so the assessor will go through, will go to all the different locations basically. Uh, then in terms of process, we're looking at the process, uh, quality control, operations, the engineering process, uh, the product itself, uh, product samples, product roadmap, product life cycle, life cycle management. Uh, also in terms of their business operation, we're looking at the uh, support, uh, supporting process such as uh, marketing, procurement, and uh, IT. Uh, the last uh, shift factor is that we're looking also at the technology. Uh, what are the automation level, the connectivity level, the intelligence level of technology? This is already there and inside their plan, basically. Again, uh, we are looking at the enterprise facility and the shop floor. And all this technology implementation and the plan uh, is mapped against the uh, utilization of the 11 technology pillars that has been identified by MITI under the industry forward. So if we're talking about the 11 pillars, I just go through a little bit uh, through the 11 pillars. Uh, the 11 pillars cover both physical and the digital part of the world. So if you look at the left side, uh, the physical part, we're talking about uh, Pillars such as uh, additive manufacturing, this is the 3D printer basically, uh, autonomous robots or cobots, uh, advanced material. Then as we move towards to the right, there's a mix of digital and physical. We're talking about augmented reality uh, simulation. Uh, then in the middle, we have the IoT technology basically as the bridging between the digital and the physical. If we move towards the digital world, then we're talking about big data analytics, uh, AI, and the last part uh, of the pillars are the infrastructure support for, for the digital. Uh, this is we're talking about system integration, cloud computing, and cyber security. So when the RA, the SSE, when they go in, they, they try to figure out how can these 11 pillars uh, benefit the company in helping them to address uh, specific, the important pain points that they, they don't want to, to solve. How the assessment is done. So in 2019, when uh, we started, uh, Miri appointed, Meteor appointed three assessing bodies. We call it SABs. Uh, they are Sirim, uh, Mari, and Mimos. But over the years, I think in 2020, uh, Miti started to appoint other assessing bodies uh, from private and also some from the university. So all these assessing bodies and the uh, assessors uh, need to go through uh, one week training, uh, certification, uh, mock-up assessment before we are certified, basically. So in 2019, uh, 508 companies has gone through the uh, assessment. In terms of the assessment process, before the assessment is done, the company that already registered through Meteor website that want to go, want to opt for the RA and has been selected and notified by Miti, they need to send the company information and also the do the self-assessment and send this information to the assessing body. It can be one of the assessing body that will be appointed by uh, Miti through MPC. 
Uh, what are the company information? Company information, things such as uh, business information, your revenue, sales, manufacturing costs, uh, uh, process information uh, in terms of capacity, OEE, uh, yield, and also in terms of human resource, uh, breakdown of the human resource, the skilled worker, unskilled worker, foreign laborers, local workers. Uh, Self-assessment is for the company to go through. I mean, this is the tool that is provided. Uh, for the company to go through the 21 dimensions that I mentioned before uh, to self rate their own uh, readiness. So this self-assessment will be reviewed together with the assessors during the assessment day. So on the assessment day itself, uh, assessment is uh, on minimum level. Uh, will be done in two days by two assessors. Uh, it can be physical assessment, but because of COVID, uh, MITI have uh, introduced the option to do a virtual assessment and also hybrid assessment. It means that uh, maybe one or two day physical and another few session online. So during the assessment, the assessor will go through the uh, process, the company information and will come up with report. So the final report will have two parts. The first part we'll call the dimension assessment. This is to go through the 21 dimension, then uh, to come up with the rating. And for each of the dimension will be some recommendations in terms of what are the things that can be improved, how the uh, company can uh, use the technology, basically the technology or improve in terms of their human resource and also the process. The second part of the report is what we call the intervention proposal. So this is where the funding coming in. So the assessor will come up with a proposal in terms of how much uh, funding uh, for that will be given to the company to uh, implement a POC in certain certain areas. The ROI need to be calculated uh, based on the pain points, losses, gain, and the investment. So if you look at the uh, for example, for the dimension assessment, if we take the shift factor of process, it has uh, seven dimensions. So for each of the dimension, you will have some kind of recommendation and improvement that is given. At the end, uh, all the 21 dimensions will be calculated and uh, total overall score will be given uh, based on the assessment. Uh, there are five categories of uh, uh, five level, the highest level, basically the leader and the lowest uh, is a uh, conventional. So in 2019, based on uh, 338 uh, RA report uh, that's completed, uh, uh, the result shows that 87% of the companies are in the newcomer category, 295 of the companies. So newcomer means that uh, have interest to pursue the I4.0 but uh, have not started anything or they start with uh, very small efforts. Uh, the remainings are in the conventional and also in the learner category. So conventional basically actually they don't interested. Uh, learner, they already started something. Uh, it's not in the big scale, but they already started something. So they already have a I4.0 implementation in several process areas basically. The second part of the proposal, as I said, talk about the problem statement. So we, we work with the company uh, to identify what are the pain points. So for example, in this case, you have a labor cost, a scrap cost, a machine downtime. This is for a company that doing CNC machining tooling. Then from there, we try to map it into the actual losses uh, in terms of uh, Malaysian ringgit. Uh, from there, we try to figure out if we put in the intervention, how much uh, losses that can be reduced. So that's the gain then how much is the investment needed basically to for the intervention and what is the final ROI. As a basic guideline, what MITI provided is that uh, for the POC, the ROI should be around not more than the 12 months, basically one year. So they're looking at a, a, a fast uh, ROI. But for most of the company, actually, when we propose the POC, uh, they can actually come up with the ROI within six months to one year. Then the intervention also will put out some basic blueprint uh, in terms of the technology implementation. So we'll look at the current process, map it, then uh, put out the proposed system with the gap uh, fill up with the technology. We also propose uh, what are 
what parts of the uh, 11 pillars that will be utilized within the proposed system. And uh, it might have some detail in terms of how the implementation of the technology can be done later on when the company working out with the vendor after they get the farm. So from the uh, 2019 results, uh, the top three pain points that was identified are uh, number one, uh, underutilization of the current uh, process or system that they have. It means that a lot of idling times, a lot of uh, downtime. Uh, then it talk about uh, the second pain point is the low performance. So when we compare the actual capacity of the process or, or the technology, uh, the actual output is lower than what is supposed to be. Then the third pain points, uh, high defects. It means that when the uh, machine, the process is not properly maintained on a monitor, so it produces more defect than what is supposed to be. Based on these three pain points, the technology that was proposed in the intervention plan uh, consists of 40% uh, of them are talking about uh, are proposing the MES system, the manufacturing execution system, basically to uh, closely monitor the process and the machines. Uh, after that is 35% uh, is for the IoT, basically to do a data collection and send it to the back end for the processing. 15% uh, talking about connectivity because uh, most of the company actually already have some basic uh, connectivity infrastructure. So only 15% of the proposal talking about improvement in terms of connectivity. And 10% uh, is on the data analytics. Some company that is already uh, advanced, they already have uh, data, then uh, the assessor can propose the implementation of the data analytics basically so that they can move uh, forward into much, much uh, better decision making based on the data that they already have. Uh, overall, from the yes, uh, assessment in 2019. Uh, uh, we have the, another two minutes, yes, Shamsul. Yes, this is the last page. So in uh, 2019, uh, what we see is that the uh, level of uh, the industry uh, in uh, within the SME in, in Malaysia, 72% are actually are only at I 2.0, 24% in uh, 3.0, and but still have 2.5% that we think that is already there. Of course, they are not advanced, but they already have the old the whole. Uh, flow of the I 4.0 from the data gathering until the data analytics, but you still have 1.4% that still at the 1.0. So this is the overall status based on the 2019 status. Uh, this is based on 338 assessment that has been done on site basically. Uh, so with that, uh, I finish my sharing to so any question. There's my email or you can uh, get in touch with the moderators or um, the organizers. So thanks. Uh, thank you so much, uh, T.S. Shamsul Anwar, for your inspiring and informative speech. And uh, for the audience uh, information, we will be uh, gathering all the questions at the end of the uh, five speakers after they finish their uh, speech. Uh, then uh, we will be open the floor for the question and answers. Um, uh, our next speaker will be uh, T.S. Nurayo Abdul Talib, Managing Director, Data Latica, uh, Sandirin Perhad. Uh, with a 14 years of professional experience, Nurayo Abdul Talib is R&D fellow, senior lecturer, and industrial consultant who is working on the for, uh, fourth industrial revolution consultancy and including the roadmap implementation of R&D. Uh, advanced skill development and the project management. She is a certified Cisco network associate and have worked with the four IR technologies, including Internet of Things, IoT, wireless sensor networks, cloud computing, and currently exploring the big data and analytics at, and blockchain. Uh, T.S. Nurayo, I will pass the mic to you. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Can everyone see my slides? Yes, you are audible and we can see the slides. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Associate Professor uh, Dr. Ahmad Abattad. Hi, and Assalamualaikum. 
salam sejahtera to everyone. First of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, DRB High Court University, Professor Omar oh. Osman, and Malaysia for IR Consortium for making this possible. Today, I will focus on Industry 4.0 Technical Consultancy, Proof of Concept, a Prototype, and Minimal Viable Product MVP in IR 4.0. So here, be listed here are the common business um, challenges of Industry 4.0 implementation. So as you can see uh, from the survey that has been done by PWC and some other organizations, so they have listed 13 business challenges of Industry 4.0. So number one, lack of common understanding of Industry 4.0 from top floor to short floor. There is a lack of understanding between different group of people working with Industry 4.0 implementation. So a gap can be hence be identified in trying to understand how this barrier can be avoided or at a minimum. Oh, sorry. Or at a minimum uh, that awareness exists in IR 4.0 implementation consideration. The second one is lack of company specific IR 4.0 vision tied to business strategy. So implementing uh, a new industry 4.0 related business system, it is worth assessing business needs and requirement for the new system. Manufacturing companies must change their current business model processes and capabilities to enjoy the full potential benefits of industry 4.0. The third one, narrow and near term focus of incremental operational gains only. You should know that when you are implementing IR 4.0, there's no shortcut. After you implement the uh, IR 4.0, you cannot expect that you can get uh, uh, ROI very fast. So number four, ROI is not clear or unattractive for proof of concept or POC project. So investment return is a key element in business world. For this reason, when migrating or digitizing a company, it must be done in a personalized way and according to the model of each business. Number five, don't know where to start and identification of relevant and prioritized use cases. Here is a lot of companies, they have no idea where to start. They don't know if they might have the data uh, required to proceed with IR 4.0 or they might not know what kind of technology they need. So that is the reason why these are one of the uh, business challenges. Then number six, long pilot implementation cycle. As you can see, it takes six months to one year per pilot. So they might have multiple pilot projects. So number seven, lack of needed data availability and quality at low cost. Poor quality data can seriously harm your business. It can lead to inaccurate analysis, poor customer relations, and poor business decisions. Number eight, lack of working model of human, machine, and insight collaboration for decision making. Um, here, what you can see is that a lot of humans, or you can say us, we feel that we are being threatened by the robot in the workplace. So these are either a threat or an opportunity. So number uh, nine, regarded as only technology-based improvement of production capabilities. Number 10, lack of effective trust and collaboration between business functions and IT. So at first, integration or conversion is that of information technology and operational technology or OT without IT and OT convergence, there is no industrial transformation, let alone modern building management and several other areas where the silos between different traditional systems disappear due to, among others, IoT. And on the other hand, and where IT and OT meet, uh, on the other hand, which is in case in close to all industry. So the essence of IT and OT convergence actually revolve ar around data and the system where they have been sitting for many years processes and also people. So number 10, lack of effective trust and collaboration between business functions 
and IT. I think I have covered that. Sorry. So number 11, traditional operational uh, excellent leadership and industry 4.0 unit operating in silos. So a core element of manufacturing and supply chain operation, especially in planning, has traditionally been conducted in silo, which uh, with demand forecasting, supply planning, project production planning, logistic planning, and sales and operation plannings are all handled by separate teams. So interrupted global trade flow and value chain have forced companies to break the silos to improve end-to-end -end visibility. Number 12, neglect of organizational structure, culture, and talent development. So here, human resource development is another concern to the management to put industry 4.0 into practice. Challenges are by no means peculiar to the financial capital required to deploy advanced technology as yet about the obtainable of qualified staff to fix to different organizational level that can cope with the increasing complexity of the future manufacturing processes. And finally, men with hammer syndrome. So men in hammer syndrome, if you haven't heard about it, is about um, a man with a hammer, every problem look like a nail, meaning that you try to solve all your problem with the same solution, which is not going to work. Okay, meaning that digital technologies of force fitting technology without gasping business needs or use case relevance. So that is the reason why we need to focus on the POC. So due to limited um, time limitation of the presentation, we will be only focusing on four business area, which is listed here. As you can see, out of these 13 challenges, we will focus on item number four to item number seven, which related to POC, prototype and MVP. So number one, ROI not clear or unattractive for proof of concept project. So based on the expert uh, recommendation, if we want to increase the ROI, there are some of the examples. For instance, if a company want to improve in terms of product quality, they must focus on quality assurance automation by using automated testing tools to run tests on the software being developed and report on the results. So automated testing handles many of time consuming tasks that were previously carried out manually by the tester. So you just imagine that the tester has to go and test every single machine on a timely basis. So it is not practical. So what you can see on the screen is the choices of IR 4.0 technologies that can be implemented and they're forecasted uh, ROI. So here, as you can see, it can be summarized that most technologies, for example, here, machine vision, digital twin, uh, automated guided vehicle, AGVs, cobots, 3D printing, cloud drones, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, IoT, and IoT platforms. So as you can see on the screen, it can be summarized that most technologies have shown that at least approximately 28 to 29 percent of the adopters have gained at least some ROI in, in a year or two years time. Whereas 23 percent have gained strong ROI within six to 12 months and 9 percent gained very strong ROI in less than six months of the technology deployment. Overall, it is safe to conclude that uh, approximately 60 percent of industry 4.0 adopters have gained at least a minimal ROI after they implemented IR 4.0. Uh, the second business challenge is the identification of relevant and prioritized use cases. As you can see on the screen in the Y axis, you can see the forecasted market size in the year 2023 and the X axis is the CAGR or known as compound annual growth rate. The compound annual growth rate um, is the rate of return that would be required for investment to grow from its beginning balance to its ending. So as you can see, for instance, here, predictive maintenance where data is used to design a proactive maintenance method to analyze the condition of equipment and help to predict when maintenance should be performed. So next slide. 
on the screen you can see the expert recommendation of 12 use cases and their supporting technologies that can enable IR 4.0. So you can see here six connected industry building block from security to application, cloud platform and analytics, connectivity and hardware and as well as system integration, plus six supporting technologies, additive manufacturing or 3D printing, augmented and virtual reality, uh, collaborative robotics, connected machine visions, drones, self-driving vehicles and 12 key use cases that you can see you can see which one is the best one and fit in your company. For example, additive production, uh, advanced digital development, augmented operation, and so forth. So another business challenge is long pilot implementation cycle, six months to one year per pilot project. So here you can see that there is proof of concept, prototype, and also a minimum viable product or MVP. So here, having the most profitable idea is not sufficient in the current fierce competitive market unless you have a product market fit. Means that the product market fit is when your product tick all three boxes, a business model that can make money, a product that solves the real problem properly, and the right market where audience want this problem to be solved. However, it's not easy without the POC, prototype or MVP approach to conquer the mission of launching a product market fit. So here, what is POC? So POC is to test the practicality and feasibility of your idea. It is usually prepared before prototyping to prove if the concept is viable to turn into reality or not. So the document may address how the proposed product will help the organization achieve its goal, objectives, or business requirements. So famous example of POC is Twitter. So Twitter in 2009 released their application only on authentication API called OAuth or OAUTH as a closed beta in Google discussion group. So as of today, the POC code for open authentication has been used in nearly every application registration and authentication process. The second one is product prototype to validate its desirability and collecting funding from the target audience and stakeholder. Creating a prototype is an essential part of an UI UX design process for a visual and interactive representation of the concept. So in short, you can see that prototype is only a model without a code, meaning that you just uh, sketch how the system will work. So it helps designer to understand how the user will interact and what visual element uh, should be included. So it is include um, some tools like wireframe, balsamic sketch, and some other uh, tools. So famous example of prototype, um, for example, Twitter um, with the acronym of TWTTR. So TWTTR, a prototype created and released by Twitter in March um, 2019. So the motive was to experiment with Twitter loop, how Twitter loop, feel and operate to collect the user feedback. They offer a link label Twitter TWTTR feedback that redirect user to a survey form. It asks for your Twitter handle and what you like and dislike and provide a blank space for the comment. This is together feedback. So and the last one is MVP version. So MVP version of product with must-have features that can make money and receive feedback from early adopters. So the MVP is the initial working product itself that has to be connected with the back end. So nonetheless, you can say that MVP is a prototype powered by code, but don't forget it is not the final product, but an attempt at a market test. So I will give you the example of uh, inspiring how MVP can gain success. So we take as, uh, Amazon as an uh, example. So we know Amazon.com started in 1994 when the internet was uh, not omnipresent like today. So Jeff Bezos' idea was an online platform where user can buy anything, but he wasn't sure if people would use it. So it started small. The billionaire first listed the five most popular products and picked books since they were in high demand and affordable. So users like the idea of buying books on Amazon website and receiving them by mail. 
after its first version success, the marketplace Amazon started to grow like a tree. So Bezos begin or began to improve the UI UX and expand the product categories according to user feedback. So today, Amazon is one of the most world largest online retailers. So next slide, as you can yes, see in I, the yes, we have another two minutes. OK, thank you. Um, as you can see on the slide, the graph on the screen shows how long it takes to implement a POC prototype MVP and full fledged product. So POC um, takes days, PO, POC takes a couple of days, um, prototype takes a couple of weeks, MVP takes a couple of months and full fledged take a couple of years to produce. So lack of needed data availability and quality of low cost. So here you can see um, there's, there is um, so many companies are afraid that they have not enough um, data or they have to purchase additional hardware to produce data to test if the end solution may work. So don't worry, our recommendation is to use Kaggle. So as you can see here, Kaggle is like a Google search engine, but it is specifically for data science. So inside Kaggle, you will find all the codes and data that you need to do your data science work for over like 19,000 public data set and use cases. So I will move on to five step approach towards successful industry 4.0 project. So here, as you can see, the strategy opportunity uh, pilot project and then learn where you evaluate and review and also adapt to uh, meet strategy implementation. So pre POC stage, as you can see, we have assessment and consultancy metrics. So we have business case, technology, what does the solution see in the technology stack, people, how does it impact the life of the worker, governance, what is the project governance, relevance, to what extent can the solution be applied, and simplicity. Of course, we are, are not going to go for complex solutions. So and also solution as a service. So the last slide. OK, five step approach towards successful industry 4.0 project. We have five step. Step number one, setting the business objective. Uh, setting the business objective, a majority of industry 4.0 projects start as a result of operational manager trying to solve problems or improve their daily work on the production floor. So therefore, the first step of the approach involves identifying and understanding the operational issues they constantly face. What operational issues does industry 4.0 address? Are uh, there any unique business objective or client demand that requires stringent measurement? And any clear metric that needed to be decided upon to serve as a baseline for the comparison. So step number two, creating prototype. The next step involves formulating um, a plan to execute a trial POC with a limited budget. So during the trial, the goal is to achieve optimization made through a manual process improvement based on analysis results. So the quant quantification of this gain is the key indicator in the validation phase of whether the trial should be expanded more widely. So step three, validating the finding with several suggested metrics. For example, to improve quality, suggested metrics should be the defective unit, identifying source of the defect, etc. So, and number four, replicating successful use cases. So after the team has verified the data and checked the use cases, the POC can be considered a success if it has met the project objective. So in this step, the scale of the system complexity can be increased dramatically. And the final step is conducting a global rollout. Uh, that is the end of my presentation. If you have any question, feel free to contact the organizer. And thank you for taking your time. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, T.S. Nurayu, for the uh, inspiring speech and also focusing on the, uh, the challenge where uh, um, where my, I came from the disaster and emergency planning uh, scholars and uh, we love to hear the challenge and the issues uh, because not easy to put our hand always on the pain. So uh, it was very much and good uh, inspiring speech. Uh, our uh, third speaker, Mr. Ricky Siuki San, uh, his industrial consultant, data, uh, data analytic uh, Sandrian Perhad. And uh, Mr. Ricky is a committed industry 4.0 and digital transformation trainer and consultant with a 20 years experience in the international uh, manufacturing industry. Uh, with a 30 years uh, in uh, IT, OT training and business consultant experience, he engaged with data-driven 
process optimization and technology enablers uh, in uh, driving people and organization in the transformational uh, digital journey and the solution engage in a project and uh, including the ARP, MECS, IIoT, analytics, system integration and MOM. Uh, comprised of the optimization and digitalization of shop floor organization and operation. Uh, Mr. Ricky, I will surrender the floor for you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad. So let me, uh, uh, I hope you can see my, 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 my slide on the screen here, right? Yes, okay. sir. We can see and your voice audible. Okay, very good. So uh, first of all, thank you, uh, DRP High University and Dela for having me here to, to, to give my uh, points of view uh, regarding uh, 4IR. Today, my topic is uh, basically more on the skills. Uh, what is the uh, industrial, uh, in industry 4IR technology application skill required? Uh, based on my observations uh, uh, that I'm talking to so many Malaysian companies, particularly manufacturing. I focus in my domain expertise more on manufacturing, especially in SME. What are the skills that uh, we need to really focus on? Uh, as just now, I am very impressed by the, the two previous speakers, uh, Jess Samsung and uh, Norayu, talking about, you know, the, uh, uh, Jess Samsung talking about the, the technology, but there's, there's so many technology here. So some of them are very commercial, whether you are nine or 11, but based on my observation on especially the SME here in Malaysia, I like to just share my uh, experience that I work in China and Germany, that what as SME with the limited resources, we, we cannot uh, set up an academy like the big, big companies, uh, you know, the, 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 the Lighthouse, you know, the, the McKinsey Lighthouse, uh, uh, network that they usually have an academy where they do upskill and uh, reskill the, 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 the workers on digital technology. So what should we focus on? So I will, I will look at the skills and quickly uh, within these 15 minutes to share with everyone. But before we go that, let's quickly go through what are the technology? What are the technology that really, uh, you know, people talking about uh, just now, as I say, uh, you know, there's so many technology. As long as it's a digital state of the art, usually it's a digital technology. We can use it, okay? As long as it helps us to do digitization, digitalization, and digital transformation, use that kind of technology. On the left hand side, I usually start off with the left hand side, which is really focused. Uh, a lot of people always, uh, when we start, uh, you know, talk to a lot of SME bosses and managers, they thought uh, for IR is just robots, you know, automate this thing. Tomorrow I see my output, I reduce the uh, face out a lot of labor intensive uh, workers, that is for IR. But in fact, uh, you know, for IR is actually talk a lot about connect connectivity, IoT or IoT in the manufacturing, we talk a lot about the new currency, which is the big data and analytic AI and what you have. So uh, the good thing is that the technology really, really that kick off is IoT that bring the, uh, the, the fourth uh, revolution. So, and also AI, big data analytics, then you have so many systems and we're talking about connectivity integration, we need to integrate together. Then if you want to put your this thing into the cloud, uh, for sharing, for I, I, iOS, Internet of Services, for Internet of Things, you need to put in cybersecurity and also digital twin. We can actually digitize your physical things on the, on the, on, on the virtual world, then you can simulate, that will help a lot, and, and so forth. But what I like to mention also, I see that Malaysian companies, actually, we do not even have a good manufacturing operation management, which is MES. MES, you need to actually digitize your operation, starting from known paper, paperless work order, all the way to tracking, and then you put IoT, automation of data, back to the backend server or the cloud to do OEE. All these things we need to do, if it's 
if if the SME they have to really uh, uh, sell uh, online, you should learn digital sales and marketing and so forth. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, this from the technology that I like to look at. What are the application that normally a manufacturing company, especially SME today in Malaysia, that were likely to have? So not only, as I say, not only robotics. A lot of SME companies will not need automated reality in your engineering services or in your warehouse where you put in the, these things to have image. Maybe not that yet, because we don't even have a good digital inventory or uh, uh, warehousing. So we have to introduce barcoding, QR code, we don't use keyboard to key in the movement transaction or inventory with do scanning. So I call this a digitization or digital your inventory first. Okay, before you move into a uh, 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 more high tech of this thing. Then uh, it depends if you really need to have robotic arms. There's uh, people are talking, talking about cobot now. Cobot is actually collaboration between a uh, human being and the robots. And this can be very plug and use, this kind of things. But uh, uh, the, the most important things that I would talk to a lot of SME, knowing their pain point is to actually do an IIoT and to talk about your business pain point, which you do not know your APQ. Just how I think uh, uh, the previous speakers talk about, uh, 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 you know, we do not know what is uh, availability. We need to actually bring up the, 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 the machine ability. That means to really kill down the, 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 the downtime. Then we need to know the quality. We need to know the, uh, the output, uh, which is actually OEE. So in order to do that, but a lot of companies are talking about OEE, but then they do not actually uh, uh, do the data collection of OEE. So we need to actually do a, a data collection of OEE. So uh, that is IOT. Then we need to do data automation. If you are not in industry 3.0, can I go into data collection? Yes. Can you jump from 2.0 to 4.0? Yes. Uh, we have done that before, but as long as you collect your data and then data collection, automation collection, and then you have all this data without key in to the back end, then you do your OEE, but OEE is just a metric. The key point of Industry 4.0 is using AI in the later phase, using AI to actually to find out what is the, the six production losses, as everyone know that, right? The six production losses to, to know the, the root causes of your low OEE, then using AI to look at the historical data put in a good data model and tell what should I do to optimize, to improve a certain metric, whether it's a Q or A or P, and then your overall OE will be improved. So that's why we need to know the connectivity. We need to know the IoT. We need to learn the skill of AI and to do it yourself. Okay? Uh, this is are the application from the technology that I share with you, it can be nine or 11, know your technology, but you have to really identify from the business perspective, look into your technology and look at your application. Then you focus on your skill, okay? There's a lot of other skills you need to uh, 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 work on, okay? Then what are the skills, you know, knowing your technology, whether, uh, you know, out of this 9 to 11 or this thing, what application did you do? I'm an SME. I'm not big, uh, 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 you know, like Western Digital. I think Western, by the way, Western Digital, yesterday I was looking at the, 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 the mechanism of this thing. It's the first Malaysian company who appointed as the lighthouse, the global lighthouse, uh, this thing in Penang. Okay? So I'm not like a Western Digital. I can set up an academy when I can literally, you know, uh, and all the gurus and, and teach them, but we should need to focus, look at your technology application. So let's look at what each and every one and see how we can actually uh, develop the skill with the help of uh, internally and externally with the academy uh, of Malaysia governments or the school. 
Automation or meditation is the one that we should focus on. If you like to, as an SME, I'm small. If I really want to know, I need to put in, to digitize, to put in AI and introduce robotic into what is thing. I usually talk to the industry expert. Let's say uh, plastic injection molding. Uh, normally a consultant, even myself, I cannot go into the injection molding plastic and advise what robot to use. I'm not an expert on that one. You should find the expert to do that. So the purpose is to actually increase your output just after installation of robots or retrofit your machines and then reduce your labor workers and improve your quality. That is the main purpose of this thing. Of course, you look at what you need to do, 3D printing for protocol, for urgent components, or even imaging is very popular now, quality inspection, automatic quality inspection using uh, AI, using the vision camera, and then data acquisition, which I talk about how we actually do IoT, collect the data by using whether you want to jump from PLC to SCADA, or you can skip that one and go to sensor. Sensor, uh, IoT sensor, and collect your data and get your OEE data and uh, look at your OE and use AI to optimize. Connectivity, we need to have a lot of people who knows the protocol, whether it's OPC UA, which is coming standard one, or MQTT, and still go with the LAN, or uh, we go for wireless. We need a lot of skill, a lot of people who is in this kind of connectivity, and also cloud computing. Okay? We need to have a people who is uh, start to learn about cloud computing, whether the PASS or uh, uh, SASS, software as a services or platform as a services, and a lot of people we need on data scientists, data analytics, data analysis. Uh, there's not a lot of job for data scientists, by the way, but we need a lot of people who really know about big data analytics, big data analysis, and people learn. Python, learn AI, learn machine learning, it's going to be coming because AI is not just for data analytics. It applies to robots, applies to, in fact, every asset, software, and blah, blah. Another thing I see that what uh, Malaysia, what we're really not focusing is processes. Uh, a lot of SME I talk to don't even have a good ERP. They just accounting software. So you need to actually put in Automate, computerize your sales, end-to-end -end sales processing. Automate and computerize your procurement. If you are a lot of uh, 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 materials, your bomb is very uh, complex, your routing complex, you may need MRP, uh, you know, production planning, okay? And then you need to do MES. You need to digitize your work order before you actually put in IIoT. That's how I see or in parallel. You have to do that. Or you apply best practices, whether the Lean or Kaizen, you know, to uh, Japanese soft and also other soft skills. Okay. So next, uh, knowing that, you know, from technology applications to SME, what is really practical, low-hanging fruit, this thing. So how we reach that path here? We, we need to do, this thing is not easy. It's not easy. It's very difficult to change an education system in any country. So you have to do it on your own and not only work with the university and also the training provider, vocational school. And you, we must know the niche, the prioritize, what are the top priority in Malaysia. And it, industry, I think, start off with uh, four IR, I think usually is manufacturing. So you should focus what uh, 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 what is really needs for that kind of technology skill, whether coming from application or coming from industry, uh, are the uh, 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 banking or industry really need a lot of AI, then we really train uh, a lot of AI that is have a domain expertise in the finance institution. Okay, So let me uh, sum up by saying that skill is very important for any, uh, we want to move on everybody, you're talking the same thing, uh, different name only. Uh, 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 we call it industry forward in Malaysia. Put people first. And awareness, upskill and reskill. Uh, big company, they have their own 
academy, but smaller company, we really need to collaborate and work uh, as an ecosystem, work with the government, work with the uh, whatever. Leadership skills, soft skills, and technical skills are different. Uh, you have to be very bold and really innovative, risk-taking. You need to be resilient because now we're talking about COVID-19. Using technology now is a good time for us to change. Change our organization using technology. Uh, that's why we see that technology can really change uh, because of COVID-19, because of a new normal. So I uh, thank you very much and uh, uh, hope you enjoy the, the webinar here. All right, pass back to you, Dr. Ahmad. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ricky, for the inspiring research and uh, the the talk about the skills uh, which we always need to to focus on in uh, uh, driving the 4IO. And uh, please allow me uh, next to uh, introduce our fourth speaker, uh, Mr. Pradita Hirsian uh, Shah. Uh, he's the head of business uh, PT Zebra Cross Technology. Uh, Pradita is a professional with a 10 years plus experience in technology startup and management consultancy uh, industry. Uh, he's a Zebra X head of business to manage the business engagement operation and partnership to deliver comprehensive digital solutions for industrial customers. Uh, Mr. Pradita, the floor is yours. Uh, sorry, I was on mute. So thank you very much. Uh... Dr. Ahmad, um, before I start, uh, let me uh, please allow me to say thank you and, and gratitude to have this wonderful session. Uh, thank you for um, Mr. Uh, Professor Omar, um, moderator Dr. Ahmad, and the fellow speakers uh, to have this wonderful session for us. So, uh, from our side, I basically would like to, I personally would like to share the uh, point of view or experience that we have uh, going to the market, bringing the solution of the uh, IIoT and also the industrial advanced analytics. Um, we are basically the company that is based in Jakarta in Indonesia, uh, supporting industry or clients to go digital, uh, assisting them with digital journey. So fo our focus is more towards the data management, data analytics, and also the uh, IIoT area. So the perspective that we are trying to bring is basically based on the experience on how do we interact with the client, uh, which may be echoing uh, on what the previous uh, speakers already uh, mentioned previously. So coming to the next uh, material, uh, here's how we look at the industry 4.0 uh, into perspective, into the, the market. So we believe that couple of uh, clients or, or companies out there is actually um, implementing their digital solution, whether it is the ERP, uh, computerization and all that. But the industry 4.0 key is about to connect and integrate all of those uh, system, all of those information become um, more insightful and bringing the uh, business value uh, towards the, the industry. So the team that we are usually found out is uh, this in this area, the first one is about the visibility towards the process so that the, the company will see what happened in, in their organization. And the second one is around the advanced analytics uh, towards the prediction, projection and, 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 and all that with, with, with the uh, information available uh, in their organization. Number three is around the IIoT plus the newest connectivity available, uh, whether it's using LoRa, 5G and all that to, to get the uh, data out of their uh, operations area machines or uh, production line and all that and the last one uh, there are a couple of hype coming through also about the blockchain but maybe we are not talking uh, too much about about the blockchain in, in this area in this session right now so having those uh, those insight or 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 we get on the on from the market uh, the way we look at at it as a framework is is to divide uh, between the acquiring the data plus aggregating this data, and we are trying to combine it in the in the uh, in the platform to manage it uh, from multiple sources towards visualizing it, 
to bring the information right away to the client and also the, the last part uh, is, is to basically providing insight uh, based on the available information through the advanced analytics. If we look at it uh, towards the right, uh, the value that is expected coming out from the solution or the initiative should be bigger than uh, area on the left side because on the left side is more toward the, the, the automation and, and data collection. But what we need to be aware of uh, based on our experience in the market is it depends on the maturity of the client itself because uh, it's, it's not all the company uh, thinking that, okay, I want to go straight to the advanced analytics so that I can get a better impact, uh, bigger, bigger value. But based on their maturity, uh, we are we need to assess uh, about the data readiness, the system readiness, uh, even the, you know, we are talking about the Thailand organization readiness as well towards towards that area. When we come to the next one, uh, talking about the digital transformation journey, um, especially in the manufacturing area, so we are trying to map the the maturity that we, that uh, I mentioned earlier into this uh, matrix. Uh, the axis of the matrix is the understanding the industrial revolution itself from the left to the right. And the most important one is about the organization readiness. This is mentioned uh, from the, uh, by the fellow speakers previously. Um, the talent or the readiness of the organization itself is become the key because why the experience that we get is uh, the the knowledge or the vision about about the um, digitalization, for example, it may be only located in 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 couple of people, maybe in the top management, maybe in the people down there in the operation. But the, the thing is, the most critical part is uh, how the organization can align and and some sometimes have kind of a change management to spread through, to make all the uh, mindset is, is on the same level. So that when the implementation comes, uh, the commitment and the ownership of, of uh, each stakeholders are on the same uh, on the same level in the same place. Because otherwise, uh, we find so many challenges. Uh, we meet people that understand when we need to interact with the people that, are, that don't understand throughout the implementation, they will just uh, ignore the implementation and all that. But, even though even though the, the the solution is basically trying to help those uh, people also in the organization the interesting thing is uh, this area is the one that we are often meet because uh, yes we know that we need the digitalization but what should we do what we need to start where do we start that's the common question that coming to us so to mitigate that we are having this type of cycle or process. So our answer usually is uh, let's start with whatever you have. What they have is basically the data, uh, the data of their organization, um, regardless in what type of source that they have, whether it is uh, in the system, a manual Excel reporting data and all that, uh, um, or maybe it's already being quite advanced in the cloud, uh, taking from, from the machineries and something like that. It doesn't matter. Start from there and start from the pain points that they need to identify, right? Because uh, they know better what what are their pain points in the operation side. And start with where are they going to be? We are not talking about the digitalization. We are not talking about the technology, but we are talking about the operation and the business direction of uh, the company. So by having that, we can collaborate with the client also to start trying to uh, basically creating a roadmap. It doesn't have to be a super big roadmap, like a five, six, seven years. It's not like that, but uh, let's try to make it uh, a short and we are trying to get a low hanging fruit on top of it before we jump into the implementation. During the, the implementation, of course, uh, the idea is to, to get the continuous check and balance uh, to to get the insight from the users uh, some area needs to be tweaked and all that especially uh, if we are talking about the advanced analytics and and uh, visualization uh, solution um, 
because the, the the team will will need to recheck and adjust the modeling that uh, initially created based on the input on the user. So the cycle will uh, run through like this. And if the question still come out, uh, we we take the example of of uh, manufacturing uh, value chain, like basically in a very high level here, right? So if the user asks, where do we start? Yeah, look at your value chain. Uh, you choose one where to start. Uh, the end goal, of course, right? A uh, couple of discussion that we have is about to supply and demand matching. How to increase the productivity on the on the production side, on the supply side, while uh, in increasing uh, and adjusting it with with the demand needs from the market. That's that's the main agenda that usually we 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 find. But uh, where do we start? It's up to them whether they want to uh, uh, on the right side, on the demand side first, or on the supply side first. It is there's no uh, right or wrong. But if we are talking about the ideal part, it should be come from uh, demand side so that this uh, the supply side will follow something like that. Maybe uh, on the last last agenda, we'll start sharing the. Use case that we found uh, when we are talking with the couple of uh, manufacturing clients that we have, uh, usually the discussion will around the, you know, industrial revolution, in the industrial digitalization around the asset management and also asset optimization. When we are talking about the asset management uh, and how to implement analytics on top of it, the discussion will around the area of the predictive maintenance, condition-based monitoring, and all that. While on the asset optimization, uh, it's more to how to increase the productivity. We are talking about the OEE, line balancing, and all that. So those two agenda, when we are talking about the manufacturing, become a, a hot topic and hot issue right now. So this is just to give the overview of, of uh, the question or the the themes that usually brought by the users. Um, they usually ask to us, right? Uh, so we we. We already have all of the information, but it is siloed from multiple type of source, uh, whether it is still on the machineries, whether it's on the ERP, some of it is a is a manual data processing and, and all that. So it becomes difficult for the users, uh, whether it's on management or the operation team to basically get the, the, the whole visibility of what happened in the in the in the operation. So uh, with this regards, the the, the the objective is, of course, the, their dream or their vision is is getting the productivity increase, right? Uh, having the pro, uh, the analytics comes to play, but before to that, uh, the first thing that needs to be done is actually about the data management. The, the, because how do we collect and integrate and manage the data coming from the multiple type of resource, uh, multiple type of source? to become in one place and we can start doing it uh, to visualize it so that they know this is what's happening in your operation and coming to next to to improve and provide insight towards the advanced analytics uh, the interesting challenge that we that we got in 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 discussion with the clients not only uh, on the manufacturing client their dream is is quite big but when we are trying to go down into the detail it comes to the data. Uh, data availability, availability sometimes become a challenge. They they don't know that. Okay, I I know I think the data is there, but I don't know where it is. But sometimes the the worst part is actually. Oh yeah, I just realized that I we never record that data. That becomes a challenge. So one by one, we need to uh, have a discussion and become a partner with with the industry to basically to know which area that we can do first before com while completing the the data that is not available in the in the area so this is this is just to uh, to visualize what we are usually do uh, in the in the market so uh, industry usually have couple of um, information in the different type of source in the different type of format so we are trying to manage uh, the the data into one centralized location then 
we come to go to the uh, visualization to show it and providing the the next step of the analytics to provide the insight uh, sometimes in when we are talking about the plc the the machine data and all that if they don't have it uh, available as a as a database usually we we go with the partners that actually uh, uh, you know focusing the solution on that area so we can collaborate together to get the data from the machineries yeah this is the last yes sir uh, we have another two minutes all right thank you very much this is the last slide uh just to summarize uh, on, on on the on the benefit of implementing the digital uh, industrial 4.0 especially on the visualization and the data analytics uh, of course with the data management itself so number one is to show about the transparency and visibility uh, of the data across the organization so break break the silos and providing them the single source of truth it's not like uh, you know one one department looking at the data is it's basically different from one place and another so we will have the single source of truth the data because we manage the data already uh yeah on the next next level yeah. of it uh, regarding to the analytics and the insight uh, they can get the information about the the oee projection real time information um yeah and even uh, we are talking about the project uh, prediction about the predictive maintenance uh, their their asset uh, asset maintenance uh, uh, schedule better something like that so i think the time is is passed already then this is the end of uh, my slide so thank you very much for the opportunity if you have any question maybe you can throw it to the organizer later thank you very much uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Pradita, for your uh, inspiring re uh, research and the question and uh, uh, talk. And uh, I also uh, would like to focus on uh, the industry framework. Uh, you are mentioning the collaboration and also the resistance to change. Uh, those uh, some of the points that we need to, to take it uh, seriously uh, to enhance the 4IR uh, um, later on. Uh, uh, last but not the least, uh, I want to introduce for you our uh, fifth speaker for today, Mr. Edward Christian, and he is the data lead uh, PT Zebra Cross Technology. Uh, Mr. Edward is a data practitioner uh, with more than 14 years of experience working on analytics solution uh, for financial services, uh, telecommunication, retail, FMB, and C uh, CPG industries. He is working uh, currently on Industry 4.0 Advanced Analytics Use Cases and Big Data Cloud Solution. Uh, Mr. Edward, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the uh, uh, seminar committee and all the uh, participants for, uh, for the time today. Uh, in this uh, session, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about more on detail regarding data. So related to building enterprise uh, data management and analytic solution. Basically, we will I will share um, some of our experience and journey, uh, some of the pain point that we uh, discovered uh, during uh, delivery of analytic solution. So hopefully uh, my talk today can give you some insight uh, on how to implement uh, our experience in your journey uh, yourself, for example, and uh, uh, to speed up the process, especially on the data management and analytic solution. Yeah. So before uh, I start my presentation, uh, I would like to share two videos. Um, our team uh, from the data science uh, and UI UX has prepared two use cases so we can understand um, what is the process what is the challenges uh, in, in some of the analy analytic solution example that we selected. So let me quickly uh, share the video before I start with my presentation. So the first video is uh, related to predictive maintenance. Uh, it will describe how our team, uh, the data team, is trying to solve uh, a predictive maintenance solution. Z 
ZX Analytics is an end-to-end -end data science platform that enables you to integrate data from multiple sources using built-in connectors, explore data with our automated data profiling tool, create data pipeline with drag-and-drop functionalities, experiment with multiple machine learning models, and deploy into production with minimal effort. In every production facility, unexpected failure and downtime of equipment can bring the whole operation to a halt and cause major business problems. Predictive maintenance allows you to predict equipment failure before it happens, minimize and plan downtime, and help you plan your maintenance better. The most common PDM solutions are time to failure estimations, failure probability estimation, and failure type classifications. This demo will provide you the detailed process of creating a failure probability model from data preparations, ML model training, and insights visualizations. The objective of the model is to predict future machine failure events based on current and historical signals from sensor measurements and other machine informations. In data preparations tab, we combine multiple asset information from telemetry, maintenance, failure, and error data. Perform feature engineering and failure labeling based on historical data combined earlier. Next step is to train a binary classification model that will be used to estimate the probability of failure based on historical data. Now, to automate the end-to-end -end process, both for the data pipelines and model scoring, we will create a scheduler based on the preferred update frequency. And finally, visualize the monitoring data, metrics, and model predictions according to your requirements. In this demo, we've covered some of the key aspects of the predictive maintenance solutions from modeling approach, data processing, machine learning experiment, and pipeline deployment using ZX Analytics. Okay, that's uh, basically the first uh, video. Uh, I will uh, continue with the second one, yeah. So th for the second one, uh, something that we encounter uh, during uh, uh, engagement with our client, typically uh, handling big data with a lot of uh, information from uh, machinery uh, typically it's a it's a challenge yeah uh, because we need to process and provide insight with uh, using big data yeah? so let me share the second video so hopefully this will give you some understanding on the the approach
I think I will stop here. Um, so based on the uh, pre previous two uh, videos, um, this is uh, basically something that we experience um, and hopefully the process or the method that we've uh, shared during the video can give you some insight on uh, for my next talk. Yeah. So let me share my screen. So for for this talk, uh, I would focus uh, mainly on uh, sharing our experience. Uh, what are the steps uh, that we've taken? Yeah. Uh, in, in terms of building a data management system and analytic solution that basically can help uh, our internal team to help a uh, uh, client to deliver their uh, transformation, especially in analytics. So I, I will try to uh, give you some insight on the data capabilities. Uh, I think this is related also with uh, Mr. Ricky uh, talked earlier about uh, skill set, yeah. So digital skill and capabilities. So I would like to uh, talk also about this, but specific on the data capability itself and how our uh, our uh, experience uh, building it for our internal uh, organization. So in in our point of view, um, there are. Uh, four pillars that we think is quite important uh, when you want to deliver data management and analytic solution. So the first one is already mentioned by the previous speaker uh, related to data automation capabilities. Uh, with this capability, basically, uh, you need to set up uh, infrastructure system uh, that can automate data logging, so data capturing, uh, data storing, and communication. So this would, would uh, focus mainly on uh, getting the data itself. The second capability that we think is quite important is on the business capability itself. I think already mentioned also in the previous assessment that uh, use case prioritization is one of the important items that, that need to be done by the company itself. So the capability to identify and execute a key analytic initiative, I think that's uh, the first step that the company needs to, to, to start with, yeah. Uh, basically to help the organization achieve the business goal and target. So the, the key here is prioritization, uh, assessment of impact, uh, which one to, to go first, which one is the low hanging fruit that you can uh, start your journey. And the third component, uh, relate to data and analytic capability. So I will discuss more data on it for this session. And the last uh, uh, is on the architecting uh, capabilities because uh, this is something that we considered very important, especially when you uh, doing the design of a solution. So you need to create a blueprint um, of your system or solution from the beginning. So the it will speed up the process and also minimize any uh, risk or additional um, uh, 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 delay in the implementation. Uh, it, it also depends on your, your organization. Uh, one pillar that is not in this uh, slide is basically on the DevOps. So if your company is, is aiming to develop the solution internally, so probably you would like to have a, a development team and also the operation team that, that handles the deployment of your solution. So next slide, I will focus on the data analytics uh, capability itself. So when we started our journey, um, uh, we don't have all of this component. So we started with uh, directly with, for, for example, uh, data management, but actually, uh, as the time goes, uh, we basically added some of the capabilities. So at the moment we have end-to-end. Uh, -end. So we have from the data governance itself, uh, you need to have a capability on uh, creating a data strategy itself, as I mentioned earlier on the prioritization. On also on the data valuation. So 
not all data has the same value. So in terms of impact, so you need to uh, to understand your data itself and which use cases will give you some uh, uh, higher impact. And also mentioned earlier by, uh, I think it was uh, Mr. Samshul, yeah. So in the data itself, you have a data maturity assessment. Uh, this will talk about the maturity of your team, uh, the organization structure, the data maturity itself, uh, whether it's available, whether it's uh, digitized and so on. So maturity assessment is uh, something that we also need to consider. Uh, for the next uh, item is on the data acquisition. So as I mentioned earlier, data acquisition uh, is plays important role in because we are doing a, a data solution. So data is uh, data acquisition is quite important. So in the generation and also moving the data from source to cloud, for example, and the automation needs to be done. So there's no manual exercise to move the data and so on. The biggest uh, component here is on the data management. So there, there's a lot of component that you need to consider. Uh, the first one is uh, data quality management, metadata management, master data management, the storage of the data. If, uh, if it's a big data, you need to, need to think about uh, the infrastructure to hold your data. And other, uh, uh, maybe I would like to talk about data interoperability. So interoperability means uh, you, you can share the same data with your uh, other business pillar. So it will speed up the process in your organization itself. Uh, the next item is on the data wrangling. So data wrangling is basically talking about how you clean the data, how you aggregate the data, how you augment the data, you add more information to increase the quality. And the data analytics, I will, I will talk a bit, a uh, little bit on this. Uh, this is more on which algorithms, which method uh, that is uh, available at the moment, and you can do use that to solve your uh, data problems. Uh, data security is also important. Uh, data and model operationalization. Basically, you need to think about uh, where you're going to deploy, how you're going to deploy, and how you're going to monitor your solution. And the last, uh, not least, is the resource management. Uh, this is talking about the infrastructure itself. So if you are going to the cloud, then you need to uh, have a team that manage the, the deployment and so on. So uh, a little about uh, the architecture itself. Um, here I presented uh, the data processes. So if you can see from the left to the right, uh, we basically, uh, the, the data lifecycle goes from raw to inside, right? So you have multiple data sources that you need to uh, uh, integrate. And in the middle, basically, uh, the data refinement or what we usually call uh, data wrangling or data processing and so on. So the idea is to, to improve the quality of the data from uh, raw to, uh, to, for example, we, we call it platinum data. Yeah? So from bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. So the data quality moves uh, from uh, 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 without insight to with insight that can be used uh, in the right side with the data consumption part. This is where uh, application query the, the single source of truth of your data set, uh, do a query or do a API call or virtualize the data. Uh, at the end, uh, it is talking about application that can show the, the impact or the result from your solution. So data consumption part is basically uh, is quite important. And uh, this whole flow is supported by the data capabilities that I mentioned earlier. So we need to build all this capability to support the data processing flow. Okay, maybe I can skip this one. Uh, maybe for the last 
uh, three slides, two slides. I, I would like to talk about the analytics capability itself. Uh, Mr. Edward, we have another one, two minutes, huh? Okay, cool. Ah. So basically for the analytics capability, uh, there's currently already uh, quite mature open source uh, algorithms or framework or libraries uh, out there. So industry basically can uh, utilize this. Uh, there are several items that um, uh, learning types that available in the market at the moment. So you have a supervised learning type of algorithms uh, for classification, regression, recommendation engine, and uh, the uh, the algorithm itself is quite a lot. So and and this is uh, already a progress from uh, I think 100 years, yeah, maybe maybe even more. So 50 years of the progression. Uh, but the, the the method becomes more uh, used today due to the uh, digitalization and also the the internet um, uh, progression. Okay, uh, maybe uh, on the last slide, I will talk a little bit on the life cycle of model development itself. Uh, the simplest version would be identifying the business goal. Right, so you talk to your uh, business team, identify the goal, what is the problem, what is the pain point, and you do data collection. You build analytic solution, uh, deploy the solution, and iterate the process. Uh, this is the simplest uh, uh, version, but in reality, uh, when your solution becomes big, uh, it becomes like this. Yeah. So um, the business problem still comes from the uh, two uh, uh, picture here, so basically the line of business itself and also the subject matter expert. And the model development, uh, typically this will be handled by data engineer, data scientist, and also uh, partly the SME itself, uh, working together uh, during the data acquisition, wrangling, uh, feature engineering, model training, and model evaluation. Uh, so SME is quite important here because uh, data needs to be validated together uh, because they have their uh, a skill on the how the business op uh, operate. So the SME plays an important role because data engineer, data scientist, uh, uh, the skill set is mainly on the data. Uh, so the model development is done, then you need to think about the deployment preparation. Uh, what runtime you need to do, uh, you need to do uh, about quality assurance. Uh, and then later we talk about the deployment itself. Uh, I think this is uh, more on the latest technology on container and you need also to think about scalability, availability and so on, and also automated uh, integration and deployment. Uh, last but not least, uh, is on the monitoring. So once you deploy your solution or model, you need to keep on monitoring it. And if, if you look at uh, in the last arrow, it goes back to the development phase uh, when there is uh, redevelopment required. So this is uh, typically on the machine learning operation uh, life cycle. So this is the latest um, uh, uh, progression on the model development. I think that's all from my side, uh, Dr. Ahmad. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we're waiting for any question. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Edward, for uh, highlighting the data capabilities in your um, uh, speech. And uh, it's uh, also one of the very much important components uh, for uh, us. Um, um, uh, please allow me uh, to, to thank the 55 speakers for today. And I have uh, two set of questions. Uh, the first question will be from the for the panel, and then uh, we will be uh, getting the the questions also from the with the audience with the help of uh, Juan Laili. So uh, the first question uh, I am having uh, from the panel for uh, T.S. Shamsul: uh, Who are the internal and the external stakeholders in terms of people, process, and technology for the readiness assessment in implementing Industry 4.0? Okay, thank you, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ahmad. Uh, in terms of the 
assessment process itself, physically, uh, the people that are going to involve are the internal uh, of the company. Uh, but it can be, it, it best be if we have everybody within the company, people from the business, people from the process, engineering, the IT, the support and everybody. But normally, when we do the assessment, uh, we also need the top decision maker because some some of the things basically in terms of like a vision, mission, statement, all those things, the direction, so we come from them. So if the decision maker is not there, it will be very hard for, for us basically to help the company in terms of the direction. Uh, but in terms of the scope of the assessment itself, it covers all the stakeholders within the value chain and the supply chain and also uh, other people in the ecosystem, the supporting. It means that people that are training providers, uh, collaborators, uh, university, um, your suppliers, customer, uh, service IT provider. So this is in terms of the, the scope of the readiness itself. Okay. Thank you so much for your kind answer, and uh, I hope um, we answered that uh, question. Uh, my second question for uh, T.S. Nurayu about uh, does the industry start POC and MVP for the implementation roadmap for their respective industry, and so they can move forward to digital transformation? Um, okay, actually it depends on the company. So when the concept is pre-existed in the market, you don't need to create a POC. But for innovative startup, however, it is uh, imperative as uh, investors are more likely to invest in a proven business model. So most probably you will go from POC because POC uh, didn't require any cost because it is done uh, internally. And then you move to prototyping, which involve your potential user. And then only you move to MVP. MVP has some cost, but it's less cost when you because it's only implement some part of the because it's MVP uh, minimum viable product. So some part of the um, functions of the product only. Then only after that you move to full fledged product, meaning that the one that you have um, do some improvement. So most probably uh, my answer is that you have to go for POC, then prototype, then MVP, then only full-fledged product. Thank you so much uh, for the for the answer. Um, moving to my next question to Mr. Ricky about moving forward, what are the most important for IR skill set for future employees in the industry? Can, can, Dr. Ahmad, can you repeat the question? Sorry. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, uh -huh. My question uh, is uh, moving forward. What are the okay. most important for IR skills uh, set for the future employees in the industry? OK, uh, yes, I uh, good question. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I uh, my observation for SME manufacturing Malaysia, uh, I think the focus should be uh, on IIoT and uh, big data analytics and also understand the uh, uh, manufacturing operations best practices, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, look into MES, you know, uh, how uh, digitalization of the work order, tracking of raw materials. So you should focus your skill uh, not only on the uh, uh, IIoT, big data analytics, and also learn some uh, uh, business processes related to manufacturing operation and know what is OEE. You know, a lot of companies do not practice OEE. I think we should not just focus on very, very technical, we should also focus on operation. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you so uh, for the answer. And uh, yes, uh, uh, we need those uh, skills for our future uh, uh, business players. And um, uh, my fourth question for uh, Mr. Pradita about what does the digital transformation really mean for today business leader after the COVID-19 pandemic situation? Okay, uh, thank you. It's very interesting question. The, the first first point, I think we cannot avoid the situation that the uh, industry trying to reprioritize their, their budget or focus during the pandemic. Uh, that's unavoidable. I mean, sometimes some of them are trying to 
to to survive, right? However, in the in the other point, uh, what uh, based on our our uh, observation and experience, uh, it actually adds the burning platform for the leaders to have the uh, industrial initiative, uh, industrial digital digital initiative to be implemented due to the pressure of efficiency. And on the other hand, is the opportunity to grow for them uh, in the near future. In that regards, it pushes us as well to basically uh, to show the impact immediately. That's what they are expecting. So we can uh, offer them like, okay, six months, one year uh, solution right away. But we need to help them segregate in the very, very short uh, result to be seen. It may may uh, use the POC approach like uh, T.S. Nora you mentioned earlier. Um, so so the the industry can feel it immediately, then they can move uh, uh, along the way. That's uh, my take. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, my last question will be for Mr. Edward about uh, data is the fuel for the industrial 4.0 and the fourth industrial revolution. So uh, how to select the important parameters of this data and to create value to generate the ROI? OK, uh, thank you for the question, Dr. Ahmad. Um, so to, to answer that question, basically, uh, I would like to go back to what I mentioned earlier related to data governance, right? So in, in the data governance uh, side, typically uh, the first step that you can do is uh, do a data catalog cataloging. Yeah? So you list down all your uh, data in your operation. Uh, it needs to be aligned with the what I mentioned earlier, data strategy. Uh, what is your business strategy related to that data? Uh, what kind of use case that you can uh, derive from that uh, data? Uh, and then last but not least, uh, the important one is on the data impact itself. Yeah. So on the use case, because not every use case is the same. So you need to make prioritization. So I think that uh, covers the three steps. Uh, uh, Dr. Ahmad, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the great answers and uh, uh, I also would like to thank you to having me today and uh, much information to share and uh, uh, sometime I have to remind about the, the time, please uh, accept my apology, uh, but uh, I know that much information to share and uh, longer time we need, uh, but because of the time constraint, uh, I have to do so. Uh, 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 by this, I want to uh, to pass the mic to Puan Laili to have the question and answers from the, the, the audience. Uh, Puan Laili, the floor is yours. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Ahmad Razmi. Okay, we have uh, a number of questions actually, so I'm going to read it accordingly. So the first one is for T.S. Norayu. Okay, uh, this is from uh, Pon Yasmin, okay, one of the, our guests here in chat. Um, is there funding available for proof of concept, prototype, and write up uh, to MVP available? Okay. Um actually there is okay there's a funding from maida and miti so it, it is called industry forward incentive so but they have some kind of um, eligibility for example like this fund is only eligible for all sme that have completed the government funded industry forward readiness assessment program so once you have completed the readiness assessment program under industry forward um, incentive, then you can apply for it. The fund will be provided on a matching basis, like 70 30 uh, basis, based on the eligible expenditure. So, maximum it can go up to 500k. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, T.S. Narayu. And she also asked if she can if she can contact you directly. Sure. If we're in advice. All right. <laughs> sure. Okay. For sure, Miss Jasmine, go ahead and contact uh, our. Uh, Yes, and Rayu. Okay, next one is for uh, Pak Pradita. Okay, the question is, what is the common challenges that you came across when working with client who wants to deploy IR in their enterprise? All right, thank you. An interesting question. So the answer cannot be just one, one or two points. It, it, it basically depends on the maturity of the client that we are facing or we are we are discussing, right? Uh, yeah, like like I mentioned earlier during the presentation, some of them are asking, I want it, but uh, 
where do we start? It's, it's a part of discussion that, that we have with the client to create kind of a journey on the digitalization, right? Uh, number two, but the, the most challenging one that we have ever encountered is, uh, yes, we want it, we are agree, um, the data and during the implementation when we ask okay give me your data because we we cannot do the uh, the data management to visualize it and even to to uh, to do the modeling out of it they start to confuse where is it it's like we don't have that a challenge. That, that's the biggest challenge that that we know so uh think that basically is, is trying to get uh, everything clear uh, in terms of the data the sample uh, that you have send it to so then we can assess upfront. So uh, the situation will not happen during the implementation. That's the most challenging one usually. Okay, thank you so much, Pak Pradita. Okay, next one is for Mr. Uh, Edward Christian, right? So the question is, I'm in agriculture uh, and looking at deploying AI analytics in fleet management matching fleet to crop um, location, different machines at different times and different location. Can you briefly give your assessment of its complexity? Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, I think uh, the, the, the person who uh, asked the question has some problem with assignment. Yeah. So typically, uh, the solution that we can use, uh, there are several. Uh, the first one is uh, on the linear programming, yeah. it's a simple uh, method, but a huge uh, uh, things to build. So the in terms of solution, there is linear programming, and the second one you can use simulation. So simulation is um, one of the method that you can apply for that uh, problems. Um, you can do a simulation on the uh, the crew itself, yeah, and how it uh, interact with the other crew. So the two approach would be, uh, I recommend the linear programming and uh, simulation. I think that's all from my side. Okay, thank you so Sorry. much, Mr. Thank Edward. You. All right, next question is from uh, UITM, Faculty of Business and Management. This question is for TS Samso. All right, uh, so the question is, what are the three main causes of the pain points of IR 4.0 implementation among SME? Uh, I think uh, in the last part of my slides, uh, uh, I highlighted that from the assessment that we have done, basically the, the three pain points the, that has been identified are uh, first is the uh, underutilization of the machines and the process, then uh, uh, the the performance uh, problem within the process itself, and the last part is the defects that come out from processes. So these these are the top three pain points that has been uh, highlighted. I mean uh, throughout the assessment uh, process that that we have done basically in 2019. Okay. Thank you very much, Teh Samso. Okay, I, I believe this will be the last question, okay, uh, for uh, Mr. Ricky, also from UITM Faculty of Business Management. Um, from your presentation, it shows that company needs to invest on in people, technologies, and at the same time, they need to struggle for them to sustain in the marketplace. So what is your point of view towards the dilemma? Oh, uh, I, okay not really uh clear about the questions so uh organization i think should uh maybe i try my best uh, i'm not sure whether address to the question i think a, a, a training is very important i see i think uh, uh digital transformation is not about technology it's about people so i think upskill and reskill and then people transformation is put people first. So we need to really invest, uh, you know, on people. So the dilemma should be, uh, you know, whether you should uh, kind of chicken or egg, right? Uh, whether you should put in your funding, limited funding on technology first or people first. I think you should, uh, you know, plan accordingly 
uh, you should not put everything on technology investment. I think you should start off with some, uh, you know, people, at least the top management, all the people who make a decision must have the awareness, awareness about, you know, what is uh, industry 4.0, the benefits, you know, after knowing that, and what is the technology uh, given in the market today? Because if you do not know the technology, you may solve the problems the old way. So if you do keep doing the same old way, you get the same old things. I think Henry, Henry Ford say that, right? So, so you must have also deep technology driven, you know, kind of solving the solution. So by putting it, by getting more machine or more people, it's not solving the problem, but using technology. So invest on people accordingly, not just everything thorough into technology. I hope I addressed you the questions. <laughs> okay, uh, one, three, right? Okay. Yeah, thank you so much for your answer, Mr. Ricky. Okay, so I believe that's the end of our Q&A session. Uh, Due to the overwhelming uh, number of questions, okay, uh, I, I believe that we will still entertain the question and perhaps have our speakers uh, answer it in, in, in written form and email it to our audience, but later on, right? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, before we end, uh, please welcome uh, Encik Ahmad Zulkarnain Abdullah, Senior Head of uh, Corporate Training Institute, the Arab University, for his closing speech as well as sharing on our upcoming program on IR 4.0. Please welcome. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, this is really a good session for all of us in terms of uh, IR 4.0. Thank you for attending our webinar, Implementing Industry 4.0 uh, Beyond uh, and Beyond, which um, thank you also for all the speakers, really good speakers. Congratulations. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. If you have uh, some of your questions that wasn't answered during the live event due to maybe the time constraint. We plan to get back to you within the next few days uh, and then we can uh, resolve your questions. So this webinar is jointly organized by uh, DRB Highcom University in collaboration with uh, Datalytica Silberhat and also Malaysia Fourth Industrial Revolution Consortium, Malaysia for IRC. Uh, to give in that industry 4.0 implementation to entrepreneurs, practitioners, graduates, students, uh, academics, corporates, and industry on assessment, roadmap, skills, and role, and also solutions. So uh, with that, we would like to share with you one of our upcoming uh, programs in IR 4.0, which we believe it is really is going to be helpful to, to establish the fundamental of IR 4.0 Essentials, which we call uh, Industry 4.0 Essentials, Disruptive Technologies and Ecosystem. So this, uh, this um, training program will be conducted in on uh, 27 and also 28 of October, uh, which, which will be uh, using online. And we expect that the level of participation is coming from executive and above. So which uh, if you have any of your organization or your employees that you want to nominate for this particular program, it's, it's going to be helpful for you to nominate them to attend this uh, fundamental of IR 4.0. So some, some of the learning outcomes that we are looking at, uh, the how to describe the drivers and also enablers of uh, IR 4.0, how can we look into smart factories, smart cities, smart products, and also smart services, whatever smart that we have in the world. So, uh, and also we are looking into how big data analytics in a network economy. So it's really going to establish a fundamental of IR 4.0 for uh, our ourselves and also for our uh, company. So there will be several methodologies that we are going to use. There will be case studies, group activities, quizzes, uh, group presentations, also readiness assessment. And uh, these are some of the outlines that we can uh, share with you. The overview of IR 4.0, uh, what is the Internet of Things? So we, we are going to go into the fundamental of uh, IoT, Industry 4.0, and also Cloud and DevOps, uh, Big Data Analytics Industry. So that's why we are saying that this program is really helpful for, for uh, to establish the fundamental of uh, IR 4.0. 
DAI, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, uh, and also we have here uh, industry 4.0 uh, readiness, industry 4.0 readiness uh, assessment, and also roadmap. This might be helpful and useful for your organization to identify the the readiness of your uh, organization. And uh, the program will be conducted in two days. Uh, via uh, MS Teams online, and the trainer is uh, Dr. Imran, which is uh, uh, he's the uh, champion and expert in IR 4.0 and also data analytics. So we are going to share with you this uh, brochure and also these contents of a program for you to nominate. And uh, the the good news is that it is HRD uh, HRD Corp SBL has grant which it is already going to be claimed under HRD Corp uh, fund, your levy. So we expect the deadline will be uh, on 25th of August 2021, and we hope that we can see you in this program. Thank you very much for attending this webinar and look forward for further collaboration and also uh, uh, programs together with you in IR 4.0. So I pass back to Nandaili. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jezo. All right, so we have come to the end of our today's program. So on behalf of the RBI High Common University, I would like to thank all our speakers for today. Okay, so thank you so much, T.S. Samsul Anu Abdul Wahid from Imos Burhat. Thank you, T.S. Nora Yu Abdul Talib from Dalatika Sinan Burhat. Mr. Ricky Siyoki San from Dalatika Sinan Burhat. Mr. Edward Christian from PT Zebra Cross Technology. Mr. Pradita Herdian Shah from PT Zebra Cross Technology. And not forgetting our utmost gratitude to Dr. Ahmad Rasmi Albatad for being our moderator for today. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before we end, I would like to invite everyone for a group photo. So this is the fun part that I like the most. <laughs> All right, so do turn on your camera for this session. Okay, Lynn, are you ready, Lynn? Yeah, we wait. We wait for okay, everyone wait. to turn off. To yeah. Turn off. Yeah, turn on the camera first. Is Dato here with us? Yes. Yes. I speak to you. Okay, done. Okay, thank you so much, Lynn, for that photo. All right, so thank you everyone for joining us for today's event and keep safe, mask on, and mind your distance. Till we meet again, pleasant days ahead. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Michael, right. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.